Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening to where, wherever you are. That's what my greeting is to you today. Um, you're here at the Chaos Weekly Community Call, so great to see everyone here. I uh, hope you're all doing really, really well. Um, yeah, let me uh, do this. As you all know, this is part of the Chaos Code of Conduct. So just keep that in mind as you interact with us today. Um, again, feel free to use the chat if you like to interact with chat, or you can um, just raise your hand, or you can you can just speak. That's fine too. If you need the minutes, just let us know in the chat, and we'll be happy to link those to you again. I'm picking up some background noise from somebody. I think it might be Annie. Could Sean? Oh, Annie, could you would just... you mind um, muting I really can... quick? Thank I you. Muted. Yep. Thank you, Annie. Good to see you here. I'm glad you made it. Uh, yeah, so feel free to add your name. And if you did take any field trips with your school, where was your favorite place to go? Looks like we have some really interesting answers on that. Wow. Oh, Georg, I bet that was incredibly powerful. Jeez. Wow. Matt seems, uh, the cheese factory seems yeah, a little less a little intense. Powerful. Yeah. Well, it's a little cliche for a Wisconsin guy, but I put a brewery down, so I don't know if I'm any less guilty. <laughs> they I mean, took you and, to a brewery in school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Did they let you sample it? No, but the adults got to sample it. They had unlimited beer at the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is the only trip I would have chaperoned. I have never chaperoned anything because, yeah, no, thank you. But wow, I absolutely would have chaperoned that. The guys, the people driving forklifts were allowed two beers a shift back in that day. Wow. Yeah. That seems like a lot. Yeah. We're driving I mean, a forklift. I'm not sure it's a good idea. For them, it's probably nothing. Like they're <laughs> probably used to it. So, yeah. Like, eh, it's like drinking a soda. It's no big deal. Exactly. You know, BMW and other factories in Germany used to have vending machines with beer at the factory lines yeah that's amazing <laughs> i know some tech companies have that as well <laughs> in san francisco <laughs> yeah well no one's gonna get crushed by falling code <laughs> <laughs> right exactly ram into a yeah. rack full of heavy things <laughs> knock it all down okay um yeah here it is I am not happy about this. I'm not, I'm oh. not gonna lie. Y'all know, because I complain about it literally every day. But daylight savings down. time is coming this weekend. So if you are in a place that has not yet or do does not observe, just check your calendar. That's all I'm gonna say. Just check your calendar for what time the meetings actually happen. The meetings that are happening in communities that don't um observe, such as Chaos Asia, Chaos Africa. I think that's it. I think that's it. That's those are tied to the local times. So those should be fine for you. It's just all the other ones that are based in the US that is going to mess you up. So my apologies. I wish I had more control over that. But we um, are looking at um, some other ways to manage our calendar. So the CNCF has a jillion meetings on theirs and they use this thing called Talkify. Um, I'm going to play with it this week and just see it just allows a little bit, it allows you to post links just to an event. You're still copying them to your calendar, so it's not going to solve all of our problems, but it does let you, um, it does split it up by event a little bit better. So I'll try, I'll, I'll play around with that and see, maybe I'll bring it back here next week, see what we think. And um, there is a free account, so it doesn't cost us anything to try just to make it easier for folks but yeah uh, and if anybody ever 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 comes across an, a calendar app that allows you to publish a calendar and lets people subscribe to a recurring event that would be amazing please let me know that is really what it comes down to is allowing people to subscribe to just one event on the calendar instead of the whole calendar so i think that would solve all of our things or at least some of our things most of our things so any comments, questions, anything to add? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I appreciate the empathy. Just, I feel like I should write my Senator or something. Like who, who do I even talk to? I don't know. So I can complain to them 
in a, in a, and whoever's in a capacity to make that change, please just stop daylight savings, please. Um, okay, so let's move on. Chaos Asia is rebooting. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you to Divya for leading this up again. Um, Chaos, we still have some folks who are still participating in Chaos from the Chaos Asia community, but we just haven't really had a, a unified um, presence in a while. So Divya is starting this back up. It, the meetings will re, uh, reconvene this week, 8 a.m. Uh, India Standard Time on Thursday. It will look like 9.30 p.m. Wednesday night on the chaos calendar. So don't be confused if you are in that time zone. Um, it is 8 a.m. on Thursday, Thursday morning. So yay. And you can also join the Slack because I know there's been some recent conversations um, happening in that channel as well. So feel free to jump in if you are in that area and you want to be part of that community. We would love it. They would love it. Do you have a sense about how they're going to manage the meetings. I have, I just have this feeling that there's a lot of people kind of in that time zone that have a lot of different interests. We've had folks, for example, like express an interest from science. We've had a folk, folks express an interest, say, from DEI, like uh, maybe like Compass, like kind of these different perspectives. And it could get to be a pretty complex meeting. That's a really good um, question. And I know that she has posted a link to the agenda. Mm -hmm. And I think one of that that's like kind of on top of mind for that first meeting is to really sort out what what they're trying to accomplish there, okay. what the goals are and what the direction is as a group. Okay. So um, the the agenda is great if you have a minute to look at it. Um, it's in Where the is... Chaos, Chaos Asia Slack, okay. which if I click on Slack, I don't know if it'll share my screen or not. So I never know okay. how it's going to happen. So. It's, Somebody can click on it and drop the link in the chat if we want to look at it together. Okay. I know she's really done a lot of work, um, not only promoting the event, but also just kind of organizing it and really trying to enthuse some or infuse some enthusiasm um, into the group. So she's been doing a fantastic job. Can't thank Divya enough. Okay, any other questions about Chaos Asia? I am going to try to, well, I am going to um, attend that meeting so that I can a record, um, but also I just want to kind of be there to see how it goes. So um, okay. if there's anything on your mind, anybody here, you know, that would like to see happen in the group or any kind of feedback or anything, I'd be happy to pass that along if you're unable to attend. I'm just curious where it goes, because you're right, we've had so many different perspectives there. Uh, in the past so I'm, I'm very curious i'm excited yeah yeah me too i'm super excited <laughs> i would i would venture to say it's less compass compassy only because it's it seems to be more of an indian uh centralization as opposed to a china centralization mm -hmm. but i don't know i mean we might have people from all over attend if, so yeah if we'll, if compass folks show up i suspect we'll be okay yeah i mean i expect that will be a topic yeah I think those meetings are going to happen in English, just for anybody who's curious. So, um, yeah, there you go. Okay, well, let's move on to the next uh, the next idea, and this is from Georg. So, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, the idea did not come from me. I just happened to be the one that suggested to Elizabeth. Uh, we were talking about the Grimoire Lab project and how to um, show its wide use and that there, there are projects that have adopters.md files. And so we were thinking, hey, this might be an interesting thing to do. And not just for Grimoire Lab, also for Chaos, where users of our software, of our metrics can self-identify and add their own names to this list. And we can build out more of, like, like when we have the reporting for the Linux Foundation board on how Chaos is doing, if we could say, hey, we have this many adopters, I think that would be really powerful to, to be able to say that. And if someone writes a blog post about it, 
then we can link to that and say, here is how someone is using our software and has written about it. So that's the idea. I think it's a great idea. I've never seen a adapters file before, but I like I like the way it looks. Oh, I, I pasted different styles in the in the agenda. So so you can check and decide which one is might be better for us. I think the one that, I mean, I haven't looked at them obviously individually. I think whichever, I like the Key Kai Verno one because it has a yeah. submitting this form option. So anything yeah. that makes it easy for someone to fill that out, I think is. <clears throat> the is problem, I think, so the, this form, I think it creates a pull request. So I don't know exactly how it does it. So it yeah. would probably require more things from our side. No, but. We're yeah. going to start with something very simple, which is a table, and, and that's it. I bet, yeah, I bet, I bet dollars to donuts there's a GitHub action underneath this form somewhere that we could get yeah. a look in their Git .github folder and just copy for the most part. <clears throat> so this, uh, this requires, uh, like a person or a company or an org to fill out the form. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's set up to enable that. I I don't know that it's in completely clear that these documents did not begin as uh, somebody just creating a known adopters list. Like, you know, for example, I wouldn't think Grimoire Lab would need to necessarily go email all of their adopters, except uh, perhaps to ask permission to put their names up there. But to get started, yeah. people we know who are using the software, we could just ask permission to include them in a list like this, as opposed to asking them to fill out a form. Yeah, we we already have mm -hmm. some some people list in Grimoire Lab, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Compass people and this uh, I don't remember the university that it was Mystic is was the name of the tool. I don't All right. remember exactly. Yeah, Rochester yeah. Institute yes. of Technology. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So we have. Oh, all of those there. So we, what we can do is to cut and paste and put them there. And and if someone else comes and says that he wants to, it, it's using a they are using a Grimoire Lab, they can create a pull request. So or what? Mm -hmm. The same with with Howard and anything. Yeah. Else. When this is kind of a weeds question, Santi. With Grimoire Lab, you have a number of repositories, which, you know, I'll look back and say that's probably smart. Um, Augur has one repository. Would you have one of these in each repository? I'm just trying no, to think we, about... Okay. We, we, will, we will have just one in the, okay. in the main repository, okay. the Grimoire Lab one. So that's, awesome. that would be enough. Awesome. Yeah, I like, I like this idea. Do we want to leave the action to, like... How do we want to implement it? Do we want to just, I don't know, I, as, a as a practical matter, it would, I would just, if if you had a strategy for implementing it, I would just copy that on Augur uh, and probably we could copy that on some of our project badging tools as well. Um, and, or I, I guess I'm just thinking practically, what's the way forward specifically? Should we? Pick one together. Do you want to pick one and we all just use it? Uh so I I was checking some of them mm -hmm. because nobody follows uh, uh the same format. Of course not. The, the, these ones are get we, we got these ones for from CNCF. Mm -hmm. So projects from CNCF. And as you can see, there are <laughs> there are totally different styles. Mm -hmm. But something as simple as this thing, organization, and maybe a description of, of use. I think that it make it, but it, it will work with with that. We don't we don't need anything fancier, fancier. Yeah. Okay. At least for now. If if later there are people that come and there are so many people using everything, we can figure out something else. But I don't know. Just creating a pull request to a. An entry to one a table that that should be very easy for 
for anybody. So I can I can I can choose a format and and if if you like it and we we can go with it and that's it. So my I have a couple of thoughts. Why don't we just there seems to be uh, I see it in the chat too the Caverno that seems to be what people like format wise. So we could just stick with that. Yep, because yeah. it's simple to start. Um, yes. This seems like it would be a pretty nice maybe project to see if anybody in the community would like to work on, just because it's a pretty simple, it looks like it's a, was it just a Google form with an action behind it, maybe? Mm -hmm. That's what I but, think it is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it might not be a, it might be a nice project to, Put out to the community. See if anybody has an interest in building it. Is the <clears throat> is the project idea to find use cases or to build the automation from the form? I was thinking build the automation. Got it. And that it'd kind of be up to like Gomorrah Lab folks to like identify existing people who are organizations and then up to Augur folks to do the same. Mm -hmm. And then if, you know, the automation would just help build out that table in the future. And then how is this different than, is it sneak? The sneak, or... you know, I'm talking about the the what's the tool that the telemetry tool that tells us where the things are being used that the Linux hmm. Foundation just scarf scarf that's the one how's, how's this different from that this is uh, self reporting the mm -hmm. .md. the scarf um, is a proxy that we put in front of all of our downloadable things or uh, tracking uh, bits um, mm -hmm. that we put in our documentation and then it's like google analytics but for software i see okay okay helpful oh, thanks i wonder if the self-reported even though the list would be smaller i wonder if it's more accurate um, if people are taking the time to show how they're using it and give a little more detail, then it might be a little more accurate than uh, a proxy metric. I mean, we could have both for sure. But there's no reason to not, I guess. Are you, Georg, are you all adopting SCARF? Uh, no, after we had the initial conversation, I, I, I didn't pursue this further and I had the impression that no one else was really behind it either. Okay. And so I dropped the topic. Okay. Because um, didn't the LF sign a contract with them? Like all projects are now, they get free access to this? Yes. Okay. Okay. So if someone wants to play with it as a Linux Foundation project, we can get this. Well, how, okay, I don't even, maybe that's a, we could talk about it next week. Because I'm not even quite sure how it works. <laughs> Based on even what you described, I sort of get it maybe, but. Yeah, we have a podcast episode with the founder okay. that might be helpful to explain listen that. to. And yeah, explain okay. that works a bit. Okay. Thanks. So we should maybe open issues or how do we want to do this? Mm. Put it to the community. Yeah, probably. I, don't, I was just thinking put it out to the general channel, like to, in today's community call. You know, we talked about building an adopters.md file. And it seems like there would be some 
automation that would go with it. If anybody has an interest in helping build that automation, let's start a, start a chat. Okay. Does anybody want to take that action item to post it? Matt's raising his hand or shrugging like, okay. Sure, that's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. Any other um, comments, questions, additions to this topic? Yes, Lucy is snoring again. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I love Lucy. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, yeah. It's great at 3 in the morning. It's like, I. Dude, they don't make a CPAP for little doggies, sadly. Or I would put her, I would get her on one. Uh, okay. Should we move on? Yeah. Is that cool? All right. Thank you, Georg, for bringing that up. That's an excellent idea. I think it will be very, very helpful to the community. Um, someone put on here thoughts on X again. I'm guessing maybe that was Matt. Yeah, it was. Just, you know, we stopped using X. It's like saying Voldemort. But um, like we stop we stopped using it a while back, and a lot of people are still on it. And I know Chaos Africa still continues to use X. Um, and the only reason that I brought it up is because um, I think in random yesterday somebody was talking about metrics from the Kubernetes side of things, and I went out and responded. And I was like, "Oh yeah, this place." <laughs> So that's that's the I just put it on there because there there are still a lot of people on on it on the platform. There were a lot more this morning when Facebook went down. <laughs> Do people have strong opinions about this? I don't. You know, I, <clears throat> this is Nicole. I just I have a comment about it. Um so Kim McMahon, and some of you may know her in, in the community, um, she actually did, did a, um, not a talk, but uh, posted a video uh, where she's talking about the use of X. Um, but, uh, you know, when she said she's going to continue, essentially she's going to continue to post there because it is a, because that's where some of her audience is, um, you know, and, and uh, so it was interesting to hear her say, you know, she's going to continue to use it. I know um, the uh, the Linux Foundation project that I've been uh, supporting, O3DE, Open3D Engine, has been continuing to use it. Um, and, and I just, I, I wonder if there is value in I, I guess I would just put it out there that I wonder if there's value in continuing to use it because some people are still there. I I agree. People are still there. Like I I'm in the, I'm in the same mind as Georg. Like I don't use it myself for a number of personal reasons, but a lot of people do to your point, Nicole. So it, we probably can't completely ignore it if we want to promote the work we're doing. What do you think, Elizabeth? Because that's <laughs> I don't know if I can that... say it on this call. <laughs> what I think about <laughs> it, but um, I I struggle because I feel like if we're going to use it, then we should also engage and um, you know, like pay attention and like respond and um, even pay attention to what other people are posting. As the post was yesterday about metrics, we weren't tagged in it. Um, it kind of came across our radar, but. Um, I, I don't know that I personally have that capacity to to keep on top of it. I mean, I barely keep track of the things that we're posting out anyway, you know, and so <clears throat> that's my only hesitation is I don't know if we have the the capacity to really engage in the way that it should be engaged, if that if, makes sense. If you could post, I could at least watch it to start. That's fair. I can I can add that to the list. So we currently post to um, LinkedIn, Mastodon, Threads, 
we can add certainly add x back in that's not a problem It'd be a lot of, that wouldn't be too much in your I don't, I don't think so um i mean we may want to look at another you know we used to use co-schedule for a lot of that and then they yeah. required um well twitter closed their api down you know so it was like not easy to post through an yeah, api yeah. but um yeah well, i mean it's you know it is what it is it's it's okay i just can't like it's hard for me to just keep keep up yeah, people yeah do no it's a full-time job to watch all of them um maybe maybe we don't even have to do it this week it was just, honestly it was just something that came up yesterday yeah no i i think it's I great I think we should yeah continue to kind of keep like stay on top of it for sure and if if i mean if the community doesn't care if it's i mean if you're gonna watch or if other people are watching then that's very very helpful um mm -hmm. i just feel bad when it's just like one way blast all the time yeah that's not really what you know what it's for yeah yeah and i think it's a lot to like what georg and nicole and sean are kind of saying there is an audience there and yeah Kansas africa does use it yeah yeah yeah, so yeah. I'm helping like support that as well true true it would be good yeah yeah I, yeah I, I think it takes on different flavors in different countries but my my reasons for not using it are uh, personal it's yeah and just, maybe that's why it always falls off my my personal radar because yeah. i don't use it at all so um i always forget about mm -hmm. that it even is there actually well, <laughs> I, had, I, I had stopped and then i like yesterday i went back to to respond to that thread and i just imagine there's a bunch more than just that one that deal with open source yeah. community health for sure yeah did you did you repost or sorry did you reply from your personal or from the chaos account mine okay but i should I, probably log in I, and see if we have mentioned pointed to <laughs> yeah i mean i can i can do it from the chaos account too that's not a problem uh, it seems more powerful coming from at germ <laughs> <laughs> are you is that your name at germ? yeah he's at uh, germ love it <laughs> Okay, so, okay, let me just put this in here in our minutes. I just keep waiting for the NIH to show up and <laughs> offer me <laughs> millions of dollars for it. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, okay, so we um, can re... I think, I feel like we have this conversation sometimes, yeah. We can start posting again regularly. And and I, I'll just put the community can help. Help keep track of replies because if the, do we have anybody here who is actually using it on besides chaos africa who is using it a lot don't everybody jump at once okay i guess not <laughs> i guess not oh that was thunder okay if i lose power y'all just keep going yeah our audience may well that's true too georg says our audience may not be on x if none of us are on x but maybe it's a new audience for us. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know how these things work. I'm sure people I mean, do. But... In the well, we should end this discussion. In my social media research space, people don't use it because it's become a cesspool of hate speech. Yeah, exactly. In the United States. Yeah. But... Well, yeah. Okay. We can we can <laughs> add it. it. I guess it won't hurt anything if we put right. It's not gonna like tarnish our brand or anything like that well, right maybe just let's wait a week at least like we can all think about it okay well, well i think we yeah. should at least continue to squat on our account if we, for sure. if we don't use it yeah and i'll yeah. i'll stay on for a week too and just kind of see what i am seeing okay all right sounds good thanks for bringing that up appreciate that and we'll talk about it next week. Uh, okay, so Georg has a code of conduct team update. I just put it on here because we met and we have done things. Um, Mary Blessing or can also update. Uh, one of the, so, so we took the, the training with Sage Sharp on responding or, or how to handle when someone makes a report and how to 
how to work with uh, a reported person. It was a very engaging workshop, very good in preparing us to enforce our code of conduct. Um, I feel much better prepared than we have been the last seven years. So if something comes up, um, we'll be ready. We then uh, decided to set up a Google group where uh, as a reporting mechanism because the current reporting mechanism is a mailing list through the Linux Foundation and it's infested with spam. So we would like to shut that down and Google Groups have a much better spam filter. So we set up chaos-conduct at googlegroups.com where people can send any reports and that will be reflected in the code of conduct. <laughs> the, um, let's see, the other thing we decide is Anita Human is going to be the lead of the group and we will meet bi-weekly uh, until we get our, get into our groove and we'll review the code of conduct. We also, um, three of us attended the event uh, by Caroline on the Contributor Covenant 3.0 to know what is happening there. It's the 10th anniversary of the Contributor Covenant, which we use ourselves in Chaos. And so there's a conversation about updating it to version 3.0 this year, but it's early development. Uh, Mary Blessing or Elizabeth was there as a guest. Do you wanna add anything? Um, none from my end. Um, however, I will be working with um, Colleen um, as the project manager for the um, the version version three, right of the contributor um, covenant. So uh, we'll be meeting today in like thirty minutes time. So uh, I don't know if Elizabeth have anything else to add to that. No, I don't think so. I uh, The only thing I will add is something I have not done yet, which is add that new information onto the website. So I have a few website things to take care of, so I'm going to do it all at once, but yeah. Anything else, Georg, before we move on? No. no questions? Anybody has questions? No, thank you. For context, for those who um, weren't here or missed it, the Code of Conduct team was appointed okay. the beginning of this year by the governing board. And so it's a new constellation. And that's why there's stuff happening in updates. Yes, thank you for that context, Georg. That's important, I think, to note. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on because we do have some other things and we have about 12 minutes left. So uh, this is also Georg, analysis of Linkerd Project Health. What's this about? Let's see. Uh, this comes out of a conversation at the uh, on the board mailing list. Yahui had pointed out that there was things happening in the CNCF universe and Linkerd made an announcement to stop releasing stable builds. So they're not changing the, the license on the source code or anything like that. They just decided if you want a stable build, you have to go with the vendor provided built and pay for that. And so it was the question, what's going on in Linkerd? And I dove into the data set that we have at Biturgia and looked at different aspects of the community. I wanted to share this. We are, this is a draft. We are getting ready to publish it later this week. And so I'm happy to share this. I'm also happy to dive into the data. Um, if anyone is interested, it's, um, it's there and available. So 
Um, that was why I put it here just as an FYI and to share. Where are you going to post it, Georg? Uh, it will first go to the Biturgia blog, and then we can we can maybe cross post it. I think you had mentioned that idea, Matt. Mm -hmm. Cross post yeah. it on the Chaos blog also. Okay. Elizabeth, is, do we cross post blogs or do you have to like create a whole new blog? Or just uh, or do we just copy it? I that's think. what we've usually, done in the past. Yeah. Okay. And okay. usually just provide an, uh, an attribution somewhere at the bottom or the top. Yeah. This originally appeared on yeah, yeah. Biturgia, okay. blah, blah. Okay. Okay. So I don't okay, think they are. But my only comment is Biturgia did not coin the, coin the term elephant factor. <laughs> but it's a minor point. Where did that term come Somewhere, from? So I, know, I saw it was scanned up. It said uh, Petrugia coined it. Maybe yeah, they did. did. Maybe they did. We did. Uh, we did. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's been around since I've known about open source. So you've contributed no, this but, major but thing. Probably was probably was an elephant factor. All right. Wow. OK. So elephant factor is about the, is the same of uh, which was the, what's the other one? Uh, uh, we're calling it lottery factor now, but I think you mean bus yeah. factor. So, yeah, that's why. So the, this is about yeah. organizations. The mm -hmm. other one was about leaders and people. Yeah. This is people working for that. So that's why we call it like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Georg, uh, well, I don't know if I should say this thing here, but you share the link with an, in edit mode so anybody can go and edit. Yes, I'm happy Everything. to receive feedback and edits. And if someone messes it up, I just go back in the history and undo that. Okay, well, just saying, I don't want you, someone to vandalize me. Yes, I trust in the goodness of everyone here. That's right. <laughs> Seriously, I, I just Googled Elephant Factor, and the top five Google results are either Chaos or Baturgia. <laughs> so that's very cool. This is a very extensive post too. I love it. Look how in depth this is. Amazing. I love it. So yeah, just let me know when it's ready to cross post on the chaos blog and we'll do that. We'll get that done. Anything else on this before we move on? Okay. Website search. That's me. <laughs> yeah, perpetual. Yeah. So, what is up with this? Do you have you have you taken a look at how? Because it just does not work real well. And I think yeah, we so, talked yeah. about possibly removing it. I think we're limited a little bit by the plugin that manages the um, knowledge base stuff. Because this is the part you're talking about, right? Like, not the whole website, but just like the documentation and the right. metrics. And the, okay. Yeah, just like we are. You... Yeah. So we are limited a little bit. Um, by that it does not do the full text search I don't think that's an option so I think what we're, we might have to do is kind of look at other ways we can um, organize this information and maybe something that has a deeper search with it the other option which I haven't looked into yet is to see if there is a like a, a plugin for the plugin <laughs> like if someone's because Minerva is a pretty big plugin it's pretty popular so there might be something that someone else has built that can go on top of that, that approves the search. So those are, I think, our two options right now. Okay. But I would like to dig in a little bit more just to, I would, I would rather come back to the community with a solution um, or some kind of something <laughs> instead of like, nope, we can't, sorry. Sean, you had your hand up. I put it down because you made all the points I was going to make about it. I, I think it is the knowledge based search. I think it is the plugin problem. Um, I did look into it a bit technically and reached a dead end <clears throat> in terms of improving what we have. But I hadn't thought of looking for a plugin for the plugin. That's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, I'll look. I think it. I think when we implemented the the knowledge base, we figured that the keywords would be enough, but mm -hmm. it just really hasn't played out that way. The keywords that we put in because that's what it searches on searches on title and the keywords and um it just really isn't quite enough to bring those search results uh like really return those as well as as it could no it's it's 
the Yahoo version of search before Google existed, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's it's trying. Yeah. <laughs> it just isn't quite there. <laughs> and we wouldn't have known that, you know, beforehand until we we implemented it and, and you know, could really use it and see how our users were were experiencing that. So. So my that's all that all makes sense. Um, for those of you that some may know this about me, others may not, but I like getting rid of things. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, like my my approach would be to remove it until we have a solution. Because right now I don't think the solution that exists is helpful at all. What we what we might do so we absolutely can remove it from those like ho those two home pages the central page for the community documentation and then also the metrics the search at the top yeah. I have not played with that too much that might suffice so we can look at that and if as long, you know just keep that search mm. at the top open if that will like do a full pages I don't I just don't know if it's including everything okay. or if we have the option yeah, to yeah. include it you know. You Sometimes you can out. configure what's included and what isn't. So I can like can look a little deeper into that. We okay. we can I I do know that the uh, the search that we have on the regular site does not will not reach into the Minerva knowledge base. So we do have a unique problem because we have two different search functions. If we take the Minerva one away, people will likely assume that the regular search is going to gather go after that information and it won't. So Removing it, I think it is a little trickier than just removing it because of that. I just suspect I, nobody uses that that search bar in the knowledge. <laughs> so that would be my guess. I use it. Um, I use it when I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> I do use it, um, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So, okay. but I, why, I do usually... you, why do you use it instead of just browsing? Because uh, I find the browsing pretty intuitive, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just go, I don't know why I use it. I just do. Okay. I don't know. If I'm looking for why one in the world, would you do that? Like, no. Explain yourself. When, I, when I'm looking for a metric definition and I'm certain I know the name of the metric, then it's useful. Right? Yeah, I mean, maybe that's my, maybe that's when I'm using it. I, I don't know that I would use it if I didn't know, but I usually just type in the name of the metric and it pops it up. Okay. Yeah. Also, I'm human. Man, don't <laughs> be logical. <laughs> On. where's the fun in that i'm so random with all my behaviors okay um okay so let's just put here we're still looking into it um because maybe um there I, well i know there are plugins that improve search site-wide so maybe that would be the answer where it would just be like a full-on search of the whole site and could yeah. include everybody that would be optimal okay perfect so um we'll just save plugins Okay, cool. You could have typed still searching. Still searching. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see what you did there, Matt. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, we have two minutes left to talk about this. These two things. These were just, they were brought up in the, it's for the social event at ChaosCon. And Don had tracked these down. Okay. And so the top one is just a bar and it seems like we would just go and just say, we're going to cover all the drinks for this group of people. You know what I mean? Like we don't actually reserve anything. And then at the end of the night, somebody just kind of like what we did in Brussels, just hands over a credit card and pays. That's the top option. And it's just, a I think, I think it's just a bar. And then the one below is we actually rent a space. It's a ping pong bar. Table tennis. I love ping pong. If anybody and cares, so it's um, it's a little bit. I think it might be kind of expensive. That's the only problem. And requires the whole like catering. You know what I mean? Reservation. There's like the more logistics that are required ahead of time for the bladder. So it's just what people are inclined for. I'm I'm thinking too with this first one we could just get some like wristbands or something just to indicate like if wh whoever has a wristband goes on the R tab so that we're not paying for people who aren't if there are other people just around randomly like, walking through right yeah. <laughs> like, <"Hell laughs> I mean, yeah. they, do that, they have to hear about chaos and we have to talk about <laughs> metrics 
<laughs> then they can have a drink, but otherwise, no. Um, so we could, you know what I mean? Like we could like limit yeah. our group in just that way or something. So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm always a fan of the one that's the lowest effort. Yeah, so. me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too. So that first one gets my vote, but I'm happy to help because I'll be there in person okay. as well, of course. So well, um, I think the, I do think the other one, not only is it more effort, I do think it would be pretty expensive. Anytime you do catering, things mm -hmm. get pretty pricey pretty quickly. And then you have to make sure you have enough for not only enough for everybody, but different kinds of mm -hmm. like all the dietary stuff. So it's yep. a little bit more of a work, but. Do we have okay. to, is there a time we have to, like, is there a deadline we have to decide? No, I think the top one, I think is almost just like show up. Show up, okay. Yeah, I don't, maybe we have to make a call and say we're expecting 30 people, you know, kind of like reserving a big table. Yeah. yeah. But that's about it. Yeah, I think it's it always just, better yeah. if we can get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Well, it seems like the inclination I saw Gary nodding to on the ease, easiness of things. Yeah. The, the top one might be awesome. It's a great way to end. <laughs> it works. I'm so jealous. You're so good at it. I you're, know. You're, you're like skilled. <laughs> I want that. I don't get any of it. That's so sad. Oh. All right. Well, I thanks got for... it. <laughs> hey, I, all right. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this all day just on a Zoom call with myself. Just to like, to, to like get Start a meeting. <laughs> you're the only one in it. <laughs> I'm the only one. That's it. Um, yeah. Anyway, I hope that you all have a really good rest of your day and thanks for showing up today. We will see you here same time next week, except for maybe an hour different. If you're not, yeah, you know, yeah. just check the calendar. Ahead or forward or backward. Yeah. That's yeah. right. I can't even do the math. I don't even know. Don't even know. Uh, depends where you are, but we'll be an hour <laughs> forward here in the United States. Uh, thanks, everybody. All right. See you, everybody. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.